going to give you some ideas about how to refashion a man's shirt to make a period looking blouse for your next production or event. This is particular costume is one that I have made for an upcoming production of Fiddler on the Roof. And to make this, just for an idea, this is a pillowcase that I made into an apron. This was a men's um, size small J. Crew slim cut shirt, which I refashioned. And then down here we have a sheet which I made into an apron waist skirt, just like the petticoat tutorial that I have. In order to make a refashioned shirt for yourself, you're going to need a few supplies. The first one would be a shirt, either a men's or women's cut, um, ideally a couple sizes larger than the costume that you want to end up with. I like to have a pinking shears because that way I don't have to finish any of the seams inside. And then you'll either want some sort of seam ripper or a small scissors. Um, and then depending on what you're making this for, you may want to have some sort of trim for around the front or on the front or I mean around the collar or on the front. And if you want to make the cuffs smaller, you'll probably want a little bit of hook and loop, loop tape if you're like me and you don't want to replace the buttonholes. So let me show you how we're going to do this. I'm going to be lazy today and I'm not going to set up a new display area for these next couple of quick steps so I'm just going to show you. The first thing we want to do is remove the collar off the band of the shirt. We can do this a couple different ways. If you want to, you can unpick this row of stitching, pull the collar out, and then re-sew it shut. I don't like to do that just because I'm lazy. So I'm going to use my pinking shears and I'm going to cut this, oh, about half an inch or so from the edge of the collar. Alright, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to turn that to the inside and I'm just going to run a row of stitching along it. The next thing you're going to want to do is take your seam ripper and you can take off like these uh, buttons that make the shirt a button down. The other thing we're going to want to do is seam rip off the pocket. Um, you can use a small scissors or you can use a seam ripper and a good quality seam ripper makes a lot of difference. Take your time, just work at those stitches and as you go sometimes you'll get to a point where you can kind of just tear it off if your fabric is strong but don't pull too hard so that you make a hole. You can kind of slash and then pull a little bit get some of those stitches out I'm going to you going to finish this up here and then we'll come back and go on to the next step okay so I've stitched the collar down I used black thread so hopefully you can see it you can see I just turned that to the inside and it's a nice edge my pocket is off and you can't even hardly see that it was ever there. The next thing I'm going to do is cut out the sleeves and I'm going to do that right on the inside stitching. I'm not going to bother taking the seam out because in a lot of shirts this is a really finished seam in here and it's not worth my trouble. So I'm just going to take my small scissors and start cutting and then I'm just going to cut the sleeve out right along that shoulder seam line and I'm going to finish this one and then I'm going to repeat it on the other side. So here is my shirt. Um, I have it on my dress form inside out. If you don't have a dress form, this is going to be a little bit trickier and you might want to try to find a friend. There's a couple different things we can do to change the shape of this shirt. We want this arm's eye to be a lot smaller. We can bring it in on the side. Um, we can also pull the shoulder up a little bit and take a pleat here. Um, if we want, we can also take some darts in here at the bust. I oftentimes make a pleat 
here at the front if you don't want to mess with darts on the back or in, I mean on the bust. And then another way to pull it up is to take a big pleat out of the center back here. So I'm going to mess around with it and see what I'm going to do. Okay, I've got my first tux placed. I folded the front of the shoulder over to the back. I pulled the back of the shirt up and pinned it in place. And this is just all eyeballing. I haven't measured any of it. Then I am kind of looking for pulling on the front, but I marked some front pleats in and I'm going to take some fabric out of the sides. If it doesn't seem like things are working out quite right, you might want to do some measurements like from center front over or down. Um, but I'm going to go sew these in and then I'm going to come back and fix some more things. The other thing that you can do as a check along the way is take your shirt, flip it around and put it on the right side to see if things are looking the way you like them. So here is my first reshaped blouse. Um, I have the two darts going up the front. Um, I did not put any darts here at the side. That is a possibility. If you wanted to do that, you're going to fold your fabric like this and make darts. And sometimes I do that. I did that on that other blue dress or blouse, but I'm not for this one. So it's just going to be a little bit looser here. Um, the other thing, it's, it's a little bit full in the back. You can leave it like this or you can shape it a little bit. I think I'm going to put just a couple loose tucks in the back to um, pull it in just a little bit. Alright, the next thing is I want to, I have my new arm size here and they're they are a little bit, obviously they're too big. And so I'm going to use some chalk and I'm going to feel about where the shoulder line is and I'm just going to kind of trace down and around. And draw a new arm side. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Since this is just a costume, this doesn't have to be perfect. And if they're not exactly symmetrical, it's not going to make um, a huge amount of difference. Remember that we do have to have a stitching line here. So if you're going to take a big seam allowance, remember that you um, pay attention to that. Um, now I'm kind of going to eyeball this and I do, I'm going to move this stitching line over, cutting line over a little bit here in the front. And as always, if you have questions about this or you're not sure, you can measure. So I can measure like from my neckline down to the end. I've got just a titch over five inches. I can compare that over here and um, maybe off a little bit. So I might change this line just a little bit. Make them a little more symmetrical same way was you're measuring your um, front darts you can measure like from your center over here I have about three inches and here I have about three inches so I did a good job estimating um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pinking shears and I'm going to cut these arms out now the other thing I want to do with this blouse is I could leave it 
just like this. But I want to make a peplum to go on the bottom so that it's already, so it can be worn outside of a skirt. So I am going to tie a thread around my blouse to kind of give me an idea where the waistline is. And then I'm going to mark that with my chalk. I'm going to cut this off with a seam allowance um, below there. I'm going to take my sleeves and I'm going to run a gathering thread along the top curved part that I cut out and then I'm going to put my sleeves back into my blouse. Here are the pieces of fabric that I cut out of the sleeves and so you can see I did a pretty good job guessing them about the same. I next put the shirt on the floor and cut along that line that I made along the waist. I took the XX fabric and measured it and figured out about how wide I could make my peplum. I'm going to cut it in half and I needed a little hem. Here I took the excess from the center back and I spliced it in to the back. Here I have it pleated on to the waist to make my little peplum. Then I ran some gathering threads around the top of the sleeve and then this inserted into the arm's eye. This shows a close-up of two cuff alternatives. On the left is the original sleeve, on the right is the cuff folded in half, and then with some trim added. So my blouse is just about done. Um, as I said, I put the sleeves back in. You can see they have just enough gathers up here that it really, I think, changed the look of how the sleeve is. I did put a couple tucks in just to hold this down and then I added the bottom of the shirt, cut it in two and then um, spliced it in with some pleats just to give it a little bit of a peplum look. Doing the reconstruction this way, we do have some extra fabric up in here so you might have some pull lines here and if that bothers you, you're not going to want to do it this way. For my purpose, Fiddler on the Rough, if they're a little bit ill-fitting, I think that's okay because this might make it look a little more peasanty. I went ahead just for an example today and I added some eyelet around the collar so you can see the difference that trim makes. The other thing I want you to look at is the difference in the sleeves. For this one, I folded the cuff in half and I put hook and loop tape on it instead and then I added a little bit of trim. I think this makes it look much less like a men's shirt than just the cuffs. Obviously, this is easier because you don't have to do anything. If you fold the cuff in half, you probably are either going to have to take the buttons on and off and replace them or do like I did and use hook and loop tape or a snap because you um, mess up your buttonholes. Um, so with this blouse, let me show you what this is gonna look like then with an apron. going to put this on and then it's going to pull these pleats in in the back by making this a shorter blouse and again with this peplum it kind of gives it a neater look versus just having it hanging loose there that's going to look great over the top of the skirt and there we have our remodeled blouse this is really this is fairly quick this is easy and if you'd like more information, you can find some costumes like this and other examples of remodeling blouses on my blog at www.costumecraze.me. Thanks for watching.